friends welcome to today's session today we are here to talk about the few of the high yield mcqs for neurosurgery which might benefit you in your nimens exam so just give me a second i'll just check whether i am live and then i'll be moving on right so i'm live so let us begin our discussion for today so how are you guys doing i hope you're doing great your preparation for the nimens and the upcoming games is going good if you have any doubts if you want to ask me anything you can just put it up in the comment section and i'll be more than happy to have a word with you about it okay but for now i'll just begin my discussion for the nimens uh, i have just a set of simple five mcqs more or less from a same topic and yeah we'll just have a look exactly how it is going to happen right so just a minute so i'll just wait for a couple of students to join us just give me a thumbs up if at all you are able to hear me and see me properly fair now so these are basically all the courses which i am launching on the an academy at this moment so there is a head and neck surgery course coming off then there is a git course which is starting on the 20th of feb then there is a surgical sub specialty course which is starting on march 10th and then there is a principal sub general surgery which is starting on february 28 so you can have a look on my page the description will be in the underlying box and uh, like underlying description box and yeah these are the offers you can have a look at it <coughs> so let's start by discussing today's session today we are here to discuss a couple of mcqs for your nimens exam i have a set of five mcqs this is the first mcq so spitzer martin grading system is used for the management of so this particular grading system with the help of this grading system we manage a particular disease can you please tell me what which of these is uh, managed on the basis of this grading system so options are cavernous hemangioma berry aneurysm arteriovenous malformation and traumatic fistulas so whoever is online i will request you to just uh, attempt it because it, uh, if it all you attempt it you are more likely to remember it okay guys so please do attempt it i'll just wait for your options i'll just wait to hear your answers guys please do attempt what is the answer to this particular question so yeah so split the martsen uh, grading system it is used in the management of anybody guys just a wild guess if at all you will well the answer to this please attempt whatever you feel like just attempt it okay uh, no issues so answer to this particular question is in fact arteriovenous malformation okay so whenever we have a arteriovenous malformation we have to decide the treatment and the decision of what treatment we should go forward with is decided on the basis of a kind of a grading system which is a splitzer mart then grading system this is an important grading system it is also given in your sabastin and yeah you should be aware of it for neurosurgery what i personally feel is that even if you are thorough with your sabastin and levin billy as far as the nimens exam is concerned you are good to go like it's a good thing so this is basically a table from sabastin this is the splitzer martin grading system and this is how the grading is done these are the points which you give it and it is based on the needle size and uh, Uh, equivalence of the adjacent brain and the pattern of the venous drainage so these are the factors on which this particular grading system is based on and this is basically used for the management of uh, the arteriovenous malformations okay fair enough can we move on to the next particular question guys right so i really really request you guys to please participate on this particular thing because even if you don't know a particular thing and if you just put it up it is more likely that you will understand it so well it's not very aneurysm uh vamshin uh, but yeah it is really uh, good that you answered so please try to attempt whatever you feel like okay so let's move on to the next question the next question is basically uh which of the following statements about arteriovenous malformation is not true okay so what i'm trying to ask you is which of the following statements about arteriovenous malformation is not true and the options are usually manifested above the age of 40 years the size of the arteriovenous malformation increases as the child grows or increases with age and low flow lesions at birth can be converted into high flow lesions in the adulthood and the risk of hemorrhage uh, rate is 4% per year so what do you think is the answer so martin is saying it's b okay the size of av malformation increases with age he thinks that it is false anybody else want to take up please do attempt whatever you feel like 
what is the answer so good to see students answering say there's also say uh, say yeah say is also saying it's b well guys i'll just wait for a couple of seconds for you guys to answer anybody else guys what do you think is the answer well okay very good very good so finally a correct answer we have the answer is basically a usually manifested about the age of 40 years no this is not true this is basically false uh, the answer to this particular question is a because it is usually manifested below 40 years of age okay in less than 40 years of age arteriovillous malformations is usually manifested now, what is arteriovillous malformation it is a kind of a congenital anomaly which occurs in which there is a communication between artery and the veins that's fine now right so what happens here that it is present since birth and as the child grows the size of the avm tends to increase now how do these guys present to you they present to you in adulthood close to 20 30 years of age and as the size of the arteriovenous malformation grows there is a lot of blood supply which is directed towards this arteriovenous malformation so let's assume this is the arteriovenous malformation the area of the brain which is adjacent to it this undergoes ischemic changes and because of this what happens patients might land up into uh, kind of convulsions and the headache and all those things so these are the clinical features of the patient with arteriovenous malformation why does it occur because the blood supply which was supposed to supply this particular part of the brain is now directed towards the arteriovenous malformation and that is why there is a relative decrease in the blood flow to that adjacent parenchyma brain parenchyma okay right now these are the clinical features now this is again a true statement that in the childhood there might be a low flow lesion but over a period of time it converts into a high flow lesion in the adulthood and that is why usually the manifestations of the disease are close to adulthood and this is a fact which you need to remember the rate of hemorrhage rate is 4% per year fair enough right so good that you answered now let's move on to the next question okay so i have a set of 12 uh, five questions i have already done with two let's move on with this okay now which of the following is not a con congenital cardiovascular disease okay so we have a set of cardiovascular diseases which are present over here which of these is not a congenital cardiovascular disease can you please tell me okay so in other words which of these is not a congenital disease that's what the question is trying to ask what is the answer i want you guys to answer guys okay so somebody is saying moya moya disease okay so moya moya is not a congenital disease is it what's the answer guys so i am my own heroine what's the answer saida matish vamish vamish yeah what is the answer guys can you please anybody else can you please answer well even you are absolutely correct moya moya disease is not a congenital disease it is an iatrogenic disease okay so it is basically we don't know uh, what is the cause of it we really don't know it is idiopathic so the cause of moya moya disease is basically idiopathic now this is straight from again a table which is given in your sabastin so we have a set of congenital diseases which is arteriovenous malformation which i just talked about a lot and then what we have we have uh, cavernous hemangioma telangiectasis venous anomaly all these are the congenital cerebrovascular diseases then acquired may we have the traumatic degenerative and the infectious that is fine and the idiopathic we have the moya moya disease so please understand moya moya is not a congenital disease is it an idiopathic disease okay fair enough and i'm sure you must be knowing about moya moya that on the cerebral angiography what do we get a smoke in puff appearance okay the smoke of puff of puff appearance which you get in the patients of moya moya disease on cerebral angiography right so moving on to the next question uh next question is stereotactic surgery is done in the arteriovenous malformation and it is reserved for the lesions which are less than so one of the treatment options for this arteriovenous malformation is what is it it is a stereotactic surgery along with this what you can do you can open it you can uh, kind of uh, Uh, cut it open and then there is a angiographic embolization all those things can be done but yes stereotactic surgery which is basically srs that is also a treatment option for a uh, arteriovenous malformation now this can be done uh, if at all the arteriovenous malformation is uh, a lesion less than how many centimeters now this is again a direct line from a sabastin can be asked what is the answer to this particular question So what is the cut off for the stereotactic surgery whenever you perform it for the arteriovenous malformation what is the answer 
So by that time, I'll just explain it to you how exactly we diagnose it. So how do you diagnose arteriovenous malformation? Usually what we prefer is to go for an angiography. So you do an angiography and that is how you kind of diagnose it. And angiography can also be used as a therapeutic option. Uh, how therapeutic option? Because what is happening with that is, right, so you can just go and you can go for angioembolization. That is one of the things. Another thing is you can do a craniotomy, you can excise this part and or otherwise you can do a stereotactic surgery. Now two of you have answered it as 1.5. Well, the answer is actually 2.5 centimeters. Now this is a direct line given in Sabiston, so it can definitely be asked guys, okay? So Parag, Saida and Jaya, the answer over here is 2.5 centimeters, okay? So please understand, a stereotactic surgery is can be done as a treatment option for the arteriovenous malformation and it is usually done if at all the size of this particular disease is uh, less than 2.5 centimeters okay fair enough direct line from sabiston so yeah that's it now diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage with a vertical layer of less than one millimeter thickness uh, this indicates which grade of fissure grading system for the ct scan uh, for the subarachnoid image, obviously. So we have a fissure grading system on a CT scan for the subarachnoid image, and if we get a vertical layer of less than one millimeter thick on the CT scan, which is the fissure's grade? That's what I'm trying to ask you. So basically, I'm trying to ask you what is the uh, fissure's grading system for the subarachnoid image. Now, the Parag Sharma is saying it's B. Anybody else wants to attempt this particular question? So Parag is saying it's B. Do you guys agree with him? What's the answer, guys? What do you think is the answer? So now this is something which is a bit interesting. That's why I've put it up. Even is saying it's A grade one. Yes, okay. Anybody else? Anybody else for A? Well, guys, understand. The answer to this particular question is in fact B. And this is the main reason why I have put up this. Why? Because whenever we read this, it looks like it is just the start of a disease, right? It looks like vertical layer less than one millimeter thick. What, uh, what can be less than this? Okay. And even if you don't know the grading system, by the logic, you tend to answer it as a grade one. Yes. Yes or no. But this is not true. In no hemorrhagic evidence, this is actually the grade one. So this is something which you need to understand and that is why I've put this up, okay? So diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage with a vertical layer less than one millimeter thick, this is grade two. Now this is something similar to the kind of a grading system which we use for the bed sore. So if you remember in the bed sore grade one, there is actually no breach in the epithelium, okay? And what exactly it is, it is just a non-blanchable erythema. So similar fashion, what is happening over here is here, no hemorrhage is given a grade one. Are you understanding? So if you have no evidence of the hemorrhage, that is given as grade one. Okay. So the grade two is basically the diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage with a vertical layer of less than one millimeter thick. Localized clots with a vertical layer of subarachnoid hemorrhage more than one millimeter thick is three. And diffuse or no subarachnoid hemorrhage, but an intracerebral or an intraventricular hemorrhage is grade four. Fair enough. So this is basically the grading system of the fissure. Now, all of you must have definitely heard about a very, very famous grading system for Hunt Hess clinical grading system. This is again used for the subarachnoid image. The basic difference is this, this grading, which we saw that the Fisher's grading, this is basically a CT grading and Hunt Hess classification. This is based on the clinical examination. Okay. So let us walk you through it. It says, I'm sure you must have heard about this and you must have read it, but yeah, let's walk you through it. So asymptomatic patient on minimal headache on slight nuchal rigidity. This is grade one and he, this has comparatively a good outcome around 70%. Now moderate to severe headache with nuchal rigidity of cranial nerve palsy only. This is grade two and again 70% outcome, good outcome. Drowsy confusion with mild focal deficit, grade three outcome reduces drastically. Stupor, moderate to severe hemiparesis, possible early decerebrate rigidity, grade four outcome is around 15% and deep coma or decerebrate rigidity and moribund appearance, this is grade five. Okay, so this is all important guys. Now this is a very famous grading system and you should definitely read about this. Okay, so this is Hunter's grading system, important. So this is basically the end of today's uh, session. I just had five MCQs for you. I just request you to stay a bit. Now, if at all you have any doubt related to how exactly read uh, for the surgery for the Nimmons exam, so please understand you also have to 
uh, pay attention towards the general part because sometimes that is asked and it carries a good weightage and as far as the neurosurgery is concerned even if you go through the loving belly and if you go through the kind of a substance it is more than enough just your guidebooks or just your neat pg notes might not suffice for the neurosurgery you will have to go through the substance and loving belly not a very big thing but you don't have to go beyond it even if what is given in loving belly and substance if you are thorough with it more than enough you do not need to go beyond it okay so for neurosurgery that is a thing even if you know that that is good enough it is very good now anything else if you want to ask if you wish to ask please do ask me i'll be more than happy with it and uh, yeah anything else guys right so thank you so much for joining with me today i hope you kind of uh, gained a bit of thing something by attending this particular thing i hope you had a good time and i just want to talk to you about a bit about the courses which we have on academy at this moment there are multiple courses which have been launched on the academy my all the educators so we have raja mandran sir who is also taking a integrated course for the nimmins exam and then we have all these teachers priti ma'am is there for the patho and micro i basically teach general surgery in the foundation batch also so even if you are considering something to go for for the aims and the neat 2021 you can definitely have a look at the courses and you will be i mean we'll be more than happy to guide you with this okay right and if at all you want to take up a subscription the one year subscription at this moment is 2.2000 uh, practically 2000 for one month which breaks down to around 22.5000 for one month if you use the promo code dr pawan slash yt so if at all you consider anything uh, to kind of join on an academy please do consider using my promo code that will be good right so yeah if you have any doubts related to neurosurgery not related to neurosurgery related to studies related to an academy i'll be more than happy to guide you i'll just wait for a couple of minutes otherwise i'll be signing off okay so if you have any doubt please do put up so thank you so much for joining with me today guys do you have any doubts or do you wish to ask me anything or something okay fair enough guys thank you so much for joining with me today have a great day see you